I know I'm going to piss some people off with this one. <laughs> but here goes. Invasive likely doesn't mean what you think it means. I see and hear folks misusing this word all the time, even in native plant gardening circles. And it, I got it. I got to just make this video to clear this up. Words have meaning, and it's important that we use this word the right way. Besides, there are other words that we can use, and each have their place. Keep in mind that I live in the eastern United States. What is invasive in the United States? or any specific state for that matter, is not necessarily invasive in other countries or states. You'll have to do some Googling of your own to figure out what is invasive where you live. Make sure to look at .org websites. But to start off, I'm just going to tell you these facts here. Invasive doesn't mean a plant you don't like. Invasive doesn't mean any plant in the wrong spot. Invasive doesn't mean any plant that spreads. Invasive doesn't mean any plant that climbs. Invasive doesn't mean any vine. Invasive doesn't mean whatever you want it to mean. <laughs> Invasive has a very specific meaning. First of all, let's start with something that's easy to memorize. All invasive plants are non-native plants. But not all non-natives are invasive. This is important to keep in mind. I'll break that into two parts. All invasive plants are non-native. Okay, so that means we have to stop calling any native plants invasive. That just doesn't make sense. If something is native to a state or county, then that means it naturally grows there. It's supposed to be there. It's co-evolved there with the other plants and animals around it. I know what you may be wondering. Well, Macy, what about vines like Virginia Creeper? I get it. I get comments on that Virginia Creeper video all the time. People seem to be confused about what invasive means. Just because you don't like a vine doesn't mean it's automatically invasive. Is Virginia Creeper native to your state or county? Check the bone app map to see as an example. Here, let's see where Virginia creeper is native. Look at that. That's a huge range, isn't it? Wow. It's not invasive in any of those green states because it is, in fact, native there. It has been there for a long time, and it's meant to be there. Now, to be fair, bone app is not perfect. It's probably the best we've got right now, but you need to cross-reference it with invasive plant websites. .org websites are probably going to be your best bet. I know, some of you despise this vine, Virginia Creeper. I personally love it. However, I will admit it is prolific. Prolific or aggressive are words we can use interchangeably. One, you'll notice, sounds more positive than the other. I find myself using the word aggressive too much. I don't want to do that too much because the word aggressive is negative. So let's try to use the word prolific for now. Virginia creeper is prolific. It spreads. It's a vine that can climb and it can also be a ground cover. It can climb your house. It can climb your trees, your fence. I hate to break it to you, but just because it's prolific doesn't mean it's invasive. Again, reference the bone app map. Is it native to your area? If so, it cannot be invasive. It is, though, prolific. And if you want to call it aggressive, be my guest. Invasive plants are non-native plants that disrupt the native habitat. They take up space where our native plants should be, but no longer can be there because of these invasive plants. They may take over the understory, for example, shading out our native plants such as spring ephemerals. Some of our most beautiful native plants are ephemeral. The ephemeral plants prefer to live under native deciduous trees so they can get the sunlight up until the trees leaf out. The problem with lots of invasive shrubs and vines is that they leaf out earlier than the trees 
that are native here, typically, and therefore they cast shade too soon and block out the light that the ephemerals need at that time. Same thing with other native plants. The invasive non-native shrubs block light for many of our beloved native plants. Some examples of these invasive shrubs and vines are Chinese privet, Amar honeysuckle, Japanese honeysuckle, and multiflora rose. Now, don't get me wrong. I have my own aggressive or prolific native plants in my garden. I get it. It can be frustrating if you have too many of any one plant around. It feels like it's taking over. Calm down. <laughs> Simply remove the ones you don't want. Try hand pulling first. Might have to use a shovel. I agree that I don't want Virginia creeper growing up my house's siding, even though I love the plant. There are some good places for it and some maybe less good places for it. I personally love seeing Virginia creeper growing on a fence, a retaining wall, or as a ground cover underneath my shrubs. The wildlife love it too. Chipmunks run inside it for cover. Sphinx moths use it as a host plant. Other critters eat the berries. It is co-evolved here and serves an important purpose. Maybe let it grow in your wildest areas of your yard if you have the space or at the back of your property. Did you know other countries respect this vine and grow it as an ornamental? Seriously, it has stunning fall color. Some folks are sensitive to the leaves, so wear gloves when you touch it. The bottom line is, me telling you that it's not invasive doesn't mean I'm telling you that you have to keep it. You still get to edit your garden as you wish, obviously. If there are some native plants you don't like, you don't have to keep them. I remove poison ivy from my property, for example, and it's native. I only keep a tiny bit on the back fence and remove all the rest. I'm allergic to it, and I've gotten a bad rash in the past, so I do not want to get it again. I still leave that tiny patch on the back fence, which is away from everyone. I can easily see it, and I can easily avoid it. The wildlife can use it if they need it. And believe it or not, wildlife use poison ivy too. So what was the point of this video? It was to put to bed the invasive debate. I know, I know, I'm still going to hear the same things and read the same comments, I get it. But now I have a video to point to. Plus, we can all use more words in our vocabulary. Y'all are very smart people. You got this. So let's review. Invasive plants are always non-native plants, but not all non-native plants are invasive. And no native plants can be invasive. They don't invade their own territory. That just doesn't make sense. Instead, call them aggressive if you want. Call them prolific if you want to extend some grace and understanding. This video was made with love. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. Thanks so much for watching. Do me a favor and leave a comment with the name of your favorite aggressive or prolific native plant below. Bye, guys. You all requested it and it's finally here. Reduce Your Lawn Shirts are now available in my brand new merch shop. Thanks so much for supporting the wildlife habitat we're creating. To support the channel, like the video, comment, and subscribe. You can also support my work by buying art from me at macylu.com. Thanks for watching!